Good morning, everybody. How's it going? I hope everybody's doing great. It's another beautiful morning here in North Florida. Uh, we still have a few spring flowers left to enjoy. I didn't check the temperature. It's got to be in the lower 60s this morning, very low 60s. Anyways, we got something happening today I'm very excited about. We got the South Dakota hooked up to the trailer and we're going to go get a piece of equipment that I have been waiting on going to get for some time to get a project started. Uh, I can't wait to go get this piece of equipment and I can't wait to get started. It's exciting. It's finally, finally happening. And I'll share that with you now. All right, guys, this is the piece of equipment that I've been waiting to go get for a long time. Guys, we fixing to put some cable for electrical to our shop. Things has finally come together. A good friend owns this piece of equipment and uh, he's allowed me to borrow it. Uh, I sure appreciate it. Shout out to him. Uh, pretty good piece of equipment right here. Gonna make the job pretty easy digging that trench. We've gotta go around 150, 160 feet. And uh, this is gonna make pretty quick work of it. So guys, this is a piece of equipment. This is a, a day that I've been waiting on for a while. All the twists and turns that we've had. Trying to get electrical to this shop, which I'll again tell you in all detail. But, uh, all right, guys, this is what I went after. Might as well get started. All right, guys, got us a 20 space breaker box. Uh, wasn't that much more money. We don't need 20 spaces, but I went ahead and bought it. Wasn't but like $10 more, so, and it actually came with three breakers. My uncle had some square tubing. My uncle that I spoke about before that lives next door. He had some square tubing, so we're going to see if we can get the uh, breaker box mounted. Get the breaker box mounted on the wall. That way we'll know exactly where to come in with the conduit. All right, guys. Uh, I'm, I'm glad I got him helping me. He's an excellent fabricator. There's nothing like having a, a, a uncle for a welder, a fabricator and everything. Uh, you know, some people's good at everything. Some people's good at some things. <laughs> I'm good at a few things, not everything. But uh, I'm blessed to have somebody like him living next to me. So shout out to my uncle. All right, guys, we'll get started. All right, trench dug, conduit in the trench. Got the wire in the conduit from our power source. Um, I run it underneath that shelter. That shelter is going away along with that building. That's gonna be torn down. That's why I didn't mind running the wire underneath there. So what we did, like you've seen in a lot of other videos, we pulled string i actually went to our powerpoint and we vacuumed the string to this lb 
tied the cables and then pulled the string back to the power point. And then from this LB, we vacuumed a string and then pulled the cable to that point there. And I wanted to video some of this guys, but the guy was taking time out of his day to come give me advice and show me what to do. And, and uh, it was a week, it's the weekend. And um, I didn't want to take up as much time as possible, you know, so I, I wasn't able to do a lot of video and a lot of picture taking because we were doing, you know, I was doing a lot of work. So, but one of the things that he suggested, because I wanted to put a water line along here, I want to put a, a, a water line there and then run along with the building and come up with another um, spigot here and then faucet and then one on the corner over there. So he suggested, hey, you've got this rat ledge right here. Why don't you just run this conduit along the, the rat ledge plus where we were originally going to come up here our pipe was actually going to be a little standoffish, which I, I, I'll be honest with you, I didn't like from the start. I didn't want the pipe way out here. So that solved a lot of problems. Uh, the pipe now is close to the building. It actually has some protection there from the lawnmower. Nothing should be hitting it. We'll get it uh, secured down. It's just laying there for now, but we will get it anchored. We will get it anchored down. Now I can run my water pipe along this building and I don't have to worry about pipes or anything until I go around that corner. If I d even decide to go around that corner, I'm thinking two uh, faucets will will be sufficient. But um, but you can see, like I showed in the previous video, how they did the rat ledge, and that actually worked out perfect. And now this is up against the building and not way out here, which I really, really like. So, um, like I said, I, I wished I could have videotaped the vacuuming the vacuuming of the uh, string but it's pretty standard if you look he he did he showed me how to do this um took a little piece of walmart bag it, he, it actually uh has a little like a balloon it actually has some uh, air in it anyways we stuffed it in and we took the old uh, shop back and uh pulled it through and then tied it to the wire and and brought the wire through so there's a million videos out there so um we pretty much did it just like everybody else does it. We, I didn't really see anything any different. Um, so, all right, tomorrow we're going to wire both boxes up, get some breakers in here. And uh, I may even put go ahead and put one receptacle on here so we can have at least some power. So, all right, tomorrow we'll, we'll get it wired up. I want a quick, quick note here. I want to show you something that my my uncle the fabricator did when they put this building together you'll notice uh it's like over here at the windows they use little pieces of angle that had pre-drilled holes in them and we didn't have none of that but look what he look what my uncle did he he took and he actually cut and bended these tabs back and and um we're gonna have bolts here, here, and here. Man, that thing's going nowhere. Uh, I wanted to show you that right quick. Uh, some of his thinking there. I mean, just you know, once this gets once this gets pulled up. But he, uh, I tell you, he's something else. So we didn't have none of those little angles to go in here like they did. So he just cut the metal, bent it, and uh, <laughs> good to go. All right, guys. <clears throat> Uh, I told you there was a lot of twists and turns in getting this electrical, so let me just start from the beginning the best I can. <laughs> so, when I built the building, of course I knew I was going to need electrical. I went out to my power pole that supplies my house, and my thinking was I would be running cable from there to here. Well, once I got inside the box, uh, everything, all the spaces appeared to be taken up in the box. Um, this home that I live in actually belonged to my father. And when he passed away, um, me and my wife 
we assumed this place, took it over, and uh, paid the mortgage off, and, and we've been living here, so different story of different time. So even though I grew up here as a child and as a teenager, you know, I didn't really pay attention to a lot of things that Dad may have done, uh, you know, while he was here living, of course, and, and this was his place. So back to the basics. The electrical box appeared to be full. So I asked my friend, the electrician, to come out and give me some advice. Well, it was agreed upon both of us that, yes, I could go back and make some changes onto the electrical box that supplied my house. But I'm working with, you know, like anybody else, I'm, I'm working on a budget here. And it appeared that that was going to cost a good bit of money. So another option that he mentioned, he says, hey, uh, I see you got this power pole in the back here. Uh, the electrical company will pull wire for so many feet to a service for free, but you have to supply the conduit and you have to uh, uh, dig the hole for the conduit and everything. Why don't you check into it? So I did. Uh, they came out, they looked at it. I was well within the footage, but that was going to require having a meter base. So that was going to basically put me having two light bills, two meters. The meter was going to cost me, just the meter was going to cost me $30 a month. I know that don't sound like a lot, but I just, I thought about that and I'm like, man, why can't I just run power, you know, to my shop like everybody else and, and not and not have that? So that's pretty much the route that I was going to take. Well, if you guys haven't uh, done anything like this lately or you're about to embark on it, I, I encourage you to check every single avenue. So the power company come out, they looked at it, and of course they agreed they would pull the wire. So my electrician friend told me, you know, one inch conduit would be, or two inch conduit would be uh, sufficient for the size wire that they'd be pulling. The, the gentleman gave me a pamphlet the day he come out from the electrical company and all the requirements of what they need. Well, they had two and a half inch conduit. And I'm gonna tell you, I really didn't think that much about it. So when I started seeing how much the conduit was gonna cost me, I was looking at going over a hundred feet between going from the pole to the building and up the side of the wall and the um, required footage down. I was gonna be well over a hundred feet. So I got to check in the prices of the conduit and man, Two inch conduit was gonna run me approximately 30 bucks for a 10 foot stick of conduit for two inch. To go that extra half inch, the conduit, the cheapest I could find, 10 foot, two and a half inch, schedule 40, PVC conduit was $69.95 a stick now guys I'm not made out of money I, I'm just like everybody else I, I have to do what I can do within my budget so you figure that up we're going well over 100 feet $69 and some people be like well hey you, you know you're getting the wire for free yes they were going to supply the wire for free but I was going to have close to a thousand dollars in just a conduit that wasn't the meter box none of the other stuff and then what just kept gnawing on me was the $30 a month. And I'm like, you know, I may be saving money by doing this now, but over time, that $30 is gonna amount to a lot. So I just, that bothered me. I struggled with it, but that's the way we were gonna go. So, I'm looking at my budget, I'm trying to figure, and I'm thinking, oh my goodness, you know, I've got this. Uh... So I said, you know what? I called the power company up. 
And I said, hey, on the advice of a couple people, I know you guys are asking for two and a half inch, but I'm being told that this wire, no bigger than what we're gonna need, would be, two inch would be sufficient. And he agreed that two inch probably would do it, but pretty much broke it down. That was their standard. And pretty much broke it down to me that two and a half inch makes it easier on them to pull the wire. And I was told by several people, man, two inch is way plenty for that size wire. They can pull it with no problem. Two and a half inch, they're just trying to make life easy on herself, or they are making life easier on herself at your expense. Yeah, that didn't sit well with me because when I called the guy and asked him, is there any way we could go two inch? He kind of talked like they could to start with and then right there at the end, like, well, you know, we just better stay with two and a half inch. It's just easier on us. That's what he said. Well, I stewed on this for a little while. I even bought the meter base. I even uh, had a picture I posted on uh, and, and a video, I believe, showing the meter base and the ground rods and everything that it was gonna take. So one day I decided to go back out to my box. Something was just nagging on me. Go back to that box, go back to your main box. So I went back to the main box, supply box that supplies my house. And I, there's a couple breakers that I thought they knew went, and I decided to start labeling them. Best thing I ever did because I found a double spaced breaker, 30 amp breaker, that was switched on that apparently went to nowhere. What me and my uncle believe was my father years ago had two hot water heaters. Now we believe that this wire went to that hot water heater that was no longer there. And apparently the wire was cut. And I guess as long as the wire is not touching anything, no moisture, it didn't trip the breaker, I'm not sure. But I know the wire was not, I turned everything off in that breaker box and we could not account for that breaker. So now I'm happy. Now I've got a spot now that I can use to run out to my shop contacted my electrical friend, told him the situation. He's like, hey man, we're in business. We're in business. Now, I've already got all this stuff purchased because we were going to the meter base outside. But I'm happy because now I'm not spending over a thousand dollars for conduit. Now I can take that meter base back, which was way more money than just this panel. But, I am gonna to have to buy my own wire. And I was good with that, I was good with that. So I shopped around and guys, I'm telling you, this is where it pays to shop around. So, um, I shopped around and I bought number six THHN wire. I bought, 500, I bought a 500 foot roll and I got that for 62 cent a foot, I think it was. Shopped around, some other places was pretty high. Believe it or not, a local mom and pop st store right here in town beat Lowe's, beat several of the major competitors for electrical supplies. Blew me away. So I ordered that wire. Well, then I needed um, some number eight wire for the ground because I'm taking the 500 foot roll, I'm cutting it up in three sections. That's giving me more than the 140 feet that I was needing for the job. So my mom and pop store in town told me, hey, I, I, I got, you, got you covered on your wire there. I got you covered. I said, okay. Well, when I got ready to do this process, I done lined up getting the machine, had everything worked out. So I called him up. I said, hey, uh, I got a few more electrical uh, elbows and stuff I want to come get, and I want to come get that wire. He said, okay, great. Well, when I got there, guess what? We unspooled the wire, and we were 20 feet short. 
And he asked me, man, is there any way you can cut stretch? I was like, I just don't see it happening. I'm already, I'm already, you know, guys, when you do a job like this, you do not want to start pulling wire and even be this much short. I'd rather be 40 feet short than this much short because short is short. It's not going to work. So he couldn't have wire till the next week. So I was like, wow. So I started calling around and looking for wire. I called an electrical supplier in the next town over. He quoted me a price of $1.16 a foot. Woo! $1.16 a foot for probably 170 feet. By the time you go up into the box on each end, go into the ground, at least 170 feet. So I was like, wow, that's a lot of money, but I gotta do what I gotta do. So I kept calling around and then I called because in North Florida, I'm not very far from uh, Georgia. So I called into Georgia and called into a company. I just knew they were gonna be like the rest of them. I said, hey, I need uh, 150 feet of number eight, THNN wire. Do you have it and how much a foot? The guy says, yep, we got it. And I'll let you have it for 58 cent a foot. 58 cent a foot. Two other places that sold electrical was at $1.15 and $1.16. Guys, that's a savings. Just so happened, my wife happened to be in that town shopping with one of her friends. I says, hey, uh, I'm fixing to have somebody there to get it. Called my wife, gave her the location, told her everything. She got there, they cut the wire, worked out perfect. So when I tell you we had some twists and turns, we had some twists and turns. Uh, my electrical guy, it took him a while to get out here. That guy is super busy. And you know anybody that's good at what they do, they're in demand. You know, whether it's a good mechanic, or an electrician, a carpenter, no matter what it is, if they're real good and they do good work and you can trust them, uh, they're in demand. So it took him a couple weeks to get out here. That, that had us, you know, backed up. But you can't complain when somebody's trying to help you. So with all that being said, we had a lot of twists and turns. We had a lot of delays on the original way it looked like I was going to have to uh, run, the, run the wire and get electric to my shop, have the meter base outside, pay basically a second light bill. But man, when I went back, something just kept nagging at me. And when I went back, and went in that box and I literally started shutting stuff off and I found that double space 30 amp breaker. Of course, that breaker is too small, but that's not the point. The point is now I had the space and that allowed us to get to this. So I know this was kind of lengthy, but I just wanted to give y'all some backstory because I kept talking to you guys, kept putting it in the videos thought we were fixing to have power. I had everything set up to go one way and we turned around and went 180 the other way, 360, whatever you want to call it. And it really, it was a benefit. So the time delay, not only, now I, I, I still spent the money, but the good thing is I feel better laying down at night knowing that I don't have two light bills and I don't have at least a minimum, if I don't even do anything out here, of $32 or $33 a month just to have that meter, just to have electrical to my shop when I get ready to use it. So I'm all good about that. I pretty much ran the wire, the conduit, everything to my shop. I took some of the things back to Lowe's that I didn't need and got credited. So when it all shook out, I pretty much spent the same on getting that electrical to this box from the PowerPoint, conduit, all the wire. And, and, and mind you, in today's prices, in this economy, that wire is not cheap. But I did the best I could, and we still spent about the same amount of money that it was going to cost for that two and a half inch conduit to get power to this shop. And the difference was now I'm not paying 32, $33 a month. So that's what took so long. And that's why I told you there was so many twists and turns and there was so many delays in between, you know, and I was really bummed out because I really didn't want to have to pay every month 
an extra 30 something dollars just to have electrical to my shop. But I thought at that point in time, that was the best option. Luckily, found that breaker, and man, did things turn around after that. So, um, I just wanted to throw this in here because I know you guys was like, this guy keeps talking about this electrical, when's he gonna do it? It's not that hard, it's not that hard. And you're right, it wasn't that hard. But now that you have an understanding of what we were going through here, now you understand where I was at. And that's why I just kind of quit talking about it for a little while because I'm like, I feel like I'm fibbing to you guys, but I really wasn't. But I just said, you know what? I'm not saying no more about this electrical until we know what we're doing, until we know what we got and, and we get it in there. And then uh, I'll share it with you guys. So that's the part of the twist and turns on the electrical. Hey, everybody. It's the next day. Had to clean up the mess here a little bit. I had to go to Lowe's this morning, and I got the water pipe. I uh, was telling you we're going to run the water to this corner, this corner. That corner is uh, still up for debate. But, guys, this is what's awesome. This right here, it's been, it's been a long time coming. Sweet. Finally. Finally, we have power to the shop. Man, this has been a struggle. It's been a journey. Uh, for those of you that will watch this video, I explained it in the middle. And, and I actually still didn't even tell the whole story. There was a, within there, there was a spot where I, I left out where the, the wire that I ordered, the 500 foot roll, the truck broke down on the way to the mom and pop store. It didn't come the next week. I was like three weeks delayed on that wire right there. I didn't even add that in the story earlier when I was explaining. That was just another twist and turn. So many twists and turns, but guys, it is here. And I cannot wait to get the power run to our receptacles, to get our lights. We've already got our lights here, just waiting to install them. And guys, you see that wire right there? Guys, that's not a lot of wire. Um, I thought, I thought I really overestimated and that's, that's really not a lot. And we probably had that much or less on the other end. So my advice, I know wire is expensive. I know it's expensive. Buy extra, get extra. Cause if you're short, it's going to be a mess. And luckily for me, I did buy extra. It worked out. Uh, even though there should be a little bit more wire laying there, I'm going to consider myself lucky. I saved money, but I was lucky in doing it. But, guys, we got the power. It's, it's man, I just don't know what to say. I just can't wait to get started. All right, guys. For all of you subscribers, thank you guys for subscribing. Thank you for watching my videos. You guys are awesome. You continue to be awesome. And I just don't know what to say. You guys just, y'all blow me away. And I, and I appreciate it so much. I really do. I hope some of these videos help people. That's why I watch YouTube a lot. Get some, you know, get information. I get, I get entertainment, but I get information, a lot of information. So hopefully some of these uh, videos. I know I'm not that good at it, but hopefully some of them that I put out help somebody. But again, thank you for watching the videos. Thank you for subscribing. And Mia says she can't wait to see us in the next video. All right, guys. Y'all have a good one.